Walking into the classroom with a necklace behind him, Han took his seat at the rear of the room. As usual, he was one of the last people to show up. The only difference was that many of the commoners were sitting near him. Coming in late as usual, Celine commented, sitting in front of him next to her sister. You know me pretty well. Han laughed. After the school trip, Celine had gained confidence in herself, no longer allowing what the nobles said about her to affect her. Lydia was still shy, but like her sister, she was able to come out of her bubble. Sticking out her tongue, Celine turned around and watched as Hai Yun entered the class. With the monsters beginning to act strangely, there had been a more significant emphasis on familiarizing everyone on the old flow, so many of their classes went over the history and testimonials. With Anaclis being a Lamia, she was unable to use the seating provided in the classroom. Luckily, her species were able to relax in a semi-standing position. As usual, she coiled her tail and adjusted herself for Han. Since she couldn't sit like everyone else, she had picked up the habit of using her tail to form a seat for Han to sit on. Using her tail to raise his body, Anaclis was able to snuggle up against his back and hug him closer to her. Han enjoyed the feel of her breasts on the back of his head. If he had to choose, Anaclis would be his favorite throne the way she lovingly cared for him as he listened to lecture. Everyone, including Celine and Lydia, thought this level of PDA was over the top, but after seeing this multiple times, the class became used to it. The only people that shot him daggers was the prince and his faction of nobles. After Han had humiliated him with Han's demonstration of his powers, the prince could always be seen glaring at Han. Based on what others heard, the prince's faction talked about how they could teach Han a lesson for what he had done to Eric. Master, they are glaring at you again. A necklace whispered into his ears. She, along with his other creations, thought it was amusing how the prince thought he could do anything to Han. Gently stroking her arms, which were around him, he said, I find it funny how they waste so much time and effort plotting against me, instead of just living their simple lives. He grinned at how the nobles started to grind their teeth when Han looked at them. Excuse me, E. Are we interrupting anything? Haiyun asked, her hand on her hip as she tapped her foot. Teacher, I was just speaking out loud, as I tried to digest the wisdom you are providing us. Han answered, trying to look attentive. Celine snorted, listening to the bull that Han was spouting. Uh-huh. I am sure that you are just riveted. She sighed in frustration. Haiyun went back to talking about the holy power of the creators, a religious organization which was founded after the year-long overflow occurred and the gods had to step in to save the world. The HPC grew in influence on the idea that the gods are actively watching over us and will save us if it becomes necessary. For this reason, we and all nations should follow the teachings laid out by Green, the ruler of the gods. For those that belong to a noble house, it is the responsibility for them to care for the common people. On the other side, the common people need to follow those who are nobles. Green stated that the nobility stems from divine providence and to stand in the way of the nobility means that you are standing in the way of the gods. Haiyun stated to a quiet audience. Sounds of clapping could be heard from nobles surrounding the prince. Eric stood up and stated, just as our respected teacher has said, you commoners only exist to serve us. If it were not for our armies and resources, you rats would all be eaten during the overflow. Eric sneered at the low-born students who stared back at him in silence. I do not know how this kingdom handles you lot, but inside the empire, commoners understand their place and are willing to offer up their lives for us nobles. Nobles could be heard cheering at what Eric had stated, 
stamping their feet and whooping. Han watched as Hai Yun quietly stood in front of the class, not stopping Eric from interrupting. He wondered if his status as a prince forbade her from interfering, considering that she was ultimately only an adventurer, regardless of her ranking. He's such a pig, Celine quietly murmured, listening to the nobles acting like fools. Ella Vionia, the elven princess, could be seen frowning as she looked at Eric. Han met her eyes and found it interesting that she didn't approve of what was being said. Though the class had spent time together after so many weeks of classes, Han didn't have an opportunity to get to know her. Aside from physical appearance as an elf, Han didn't know much of their societal structure and only assumed that they mimicked humans. The beast people seemed to have a society that was similar to nomadic cultures. After Eric's outburst, the class was finished for the day, and everyone began to disperse. Celine turned around and faced Han, asking, You interested in meeting up with everyone and getting something to eat? Many of the people that surrounded him nodded their head in encouragement. Often, after class, a group of them would head off to some place to hang out and relax for the day. It was a great way to get to know everyone and increase their bonds. It reminded Han of how he used to hang out with classmates after lecture was finished, during his undergraduate program. Like on Earth, this group would head to a restaurant to vent about their courses and talk about the latest gossip. With how many different social classes and species living within the walls, there always existed some drama.